Welcome uh, to the webinar. We're excited to share another opportunity with all of you. I'm Neela Mulgard. I'm leading the Office of Small Business Development. It's a new office uh, that was just kicked off about three months ago. Our mission is to help serve our entrepreneurs, our startups, our small businesses, and the organizations across the state that support them. We do that through um, increasing access to capital, our capacity, uh, increasing the capacity of businesses, and increasing connectivity. And this has allowed us to have a more holistic view of not only the services that we're providing, but also uh, the funding that's available. So when you look at this, some other current funding that's happening now that we want to make sure that you're aware of um, is last Thursday, we hosted the Small Business Assistance Partnership um, informational webinar. We have about $12 million in that. And um, as you can see from the, the Venn diagram, our funding, our programs, our resources are really focused on these three pillars within our office, equity, vibrancy, and innovation. In addition to the RFP of the Small Business Assistance Partnership Program that's now out and uh, deadlines are um, at the end of August, August 31st, we are working on some direct appropriations, about $32 million, um, that have uh, a host of organizations that were selected by legislators to provide direct funding. Then we have our Small Business Development Centers, our SBDC offices, and they have received some state funding in addition to federal dollars. And then we have our Launch Minnesota Entrepreneurial Education RFP that we're here today to discuss. And that we have 1 million for the biennium. And we are gonna dig into more details uh, for the remainder of the webinar. The one thing that I really wanna point out though, when we're, you're looking at funding sources, is the Small Business Assistance Partnership Program is really focused on direct service, direct technical assistance to a business. It's more one-on-one -on -one assistance. And um, it, it, the focus is that, that programming. Um, now the Launch Minnesota grant is really focused more on the navigation of the resources, the one-to-many um, education, the networking, connecting um, our entrepreneurs and our businesses to the, the people and organizations that could help them. It's really focused on those regional and uh, ecosystem focused programming. So um, today you will hear a uh, majority of the time from Paul Daniels, who's joined us. Uh, and, he is part of our community partnerships team, and you'll hear from Maddie LeClaire, the program assistant from Launch Minnesota. But uh, Paul, the next slide, please. Um, Launch Minnesota, this educational grant is really, really critical to achieving the mission of Launch Minnesota, which is to empower and elevate our state's innovation ecosystem. We do this by focusing on three different key aspects, increasing access to capital, developing entrepreneurial talent through the help of a lot of our grantees, and also building that collaborative culture across Minnesota. This work should not be transactional. This should be transformational work. Uh, we need to compete as the state of Minnesota in a global economy, and we are relying on these regional efforts and statewide efforts to make sure that we're we're increasing, um, growing our muscles uh, across the state to continue to form um, the relationships with stakeholders in academia, with our um, investor community, with successful founders, with emerging um, ideas and innovators. Um, this grant is really pulling all of those people together. We are asking stakeholders throughout the ecosystem to work together across cities, across organizations, to really provide that entrepreneurial journey from idea to investment stage so that uh, working together, entrepreneurs can start and scale at a faster cadence. Though this grant is not directly to businesses, the focus should be on our entrepreneurs and our businesses on helping them better coordinate and navigate these resources. We know that a connected and coordinated eco ecosystem increases the rate and the success of new business formation. 
And now Maddie is going to continue on with some of the um, benefits of the Launch Minnesota Network and some of the momentum that we've seen over the last few years due to a lot of hard work at the local level. Maddie? Hey, thanks, Neela. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to dive in, like I said, like Neela said, into the Launch Minnesota Network. Uh, first of all, a little bit of background for those who haven't been involved with it previously or perhaps aren't as familiar. Um, this is a massive uh, effort on behalf of entrepreneurial support organizations throughout the state with Launch Minnesota funding. Uh, in the last fiscal year, the Launch Minnesota Network was made up of more than 90 organizations throughout the state. It's organized in a hub and spoke model that allows each region to customize its offerings while still enabling entrepreneurs to access statewide resources and best practices. Uh, the network has six, or sorry, it was, uh, we had nine hub leaders across the state, across in Minnesota's six regions. Um, and all of these organizations and their partners are working together, helping entrepreneurs across the state navigate the wealth of uh, someone. Thank you. Uh, and so the network, um, is helping entrepreneurs navigate the wealth of regional and statewide resources because as we know there are so many across the state sometimes it's hard to know where to start so these uh, organizations are providing resources and serving as navigators for uh, businesses all over Minnesota um, and, and as you can see on the map here um, these are the organizations that were in the regions from the previous fiscal year so we had the now innovators network in uh, northwest Minnesota Innovate 218 in Northeast, Fastlane 94 uh, in West Central, Launch Minnesota Southwest led by, by uh, Man University of uh, Mankato in Southwest and Southeast was the E1 Collaborative, um, Forge North in the Twin Cities, and then we had Social Impact Strategies Group, aka Connect Up, uh, as well as Embold in the University or in AURI in the University of Minnesota. Um, leading statewide efforts. And uh, together we were able to improve coordination, increase capacity, and maximize the impact of not just Launch Minnesota dollars, but ESO efforts all over the state. Next slide. So here are a couple of things that we are particularly excited about. Uh, the Launch Minnesota, Launch Minnesota and the Launch Minnesota Network collaborated with the Minnesota Cup to establish feeder competitions in every single region in greater Minnesota. So in the past couple of years, um, all of the organization, all of the regions in greater Minnesota, West Central, Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, and Southeast have all had uh, their own startup competitions in the regions in the spring. And the winners of those competitions um, have the opportunity, thanks to uh, relationships fostered between these organizations, Launch Minnesota and the University of Minnesota, Minnesota to advance to the Minnesota Cup, which is the largest, not just the largest startup competition in the state, but the largest statewide startup competition in the entire country. So we've really been able to elevate um, some awesome startups through this collaboration. And one of the statistics that you can see here, uh, organizers told Launch Minnesota that three over 3,000, they had over 3,000 applicants for the Minnesota Cup in 2023, and 30% of the applicants from Greater Minnesota uh, were from Greater Minnesota, and 67 of Minnesota's 87 counties were represented. So we are very happy to see that. Um, innovation grants, that's probably the thing that Launch Minnesota is best known for. Um, uh, you know, across the state, our, our innovation grants, we're seeing an increase in applicants and recipients from rural and recipients from rural areas. Uh, grantees so far, or in uh, 2022, grantees collectively raised 79 million in funds from other investors in 2022, representing a $12.40 return for every Launch Minnesota dollar invested, which is amazing. And we are very proud of that statistic. Um, and the last thing that uh, I think is interesting about our grants is that 61% of Launch Minnesota funds have gone to targeted businesses, which we define as businesses that are woman-owned, BIPOC-owned, um, veteran owned or located in greater Minnesota. So we've really been able to um, improve coordination and distribute resources and foster new relationships through the network. And these are just a couple of examples. Next slide. 
Okay, and then we also partnered with the University of Minnesota Extension to study sort of the impact of the Launch Minnesota network, because it's one thing, you know, to have anecdotal evidence saying, hey, these two regions are talking more, but it's a whole other thing to bring in the University of Minnesota and actually show the impact that uh, some of these that the network has had. So as you can see here, these two graphs are southeastern Minnesota. Um, relationships changed substantially over the course of just one year. Uh, the six organizations responding to the University of Minnesota survey noted 49 connections um, as of January 2020. At the time the survey began, about one fourth of the possible connections among the 12 organizations existed. So that equals a network density of about 27%. Um, about a year and a half later, 18 months later into the start into the survey, uh, the relationships in the organizations had already deepened substantially. 77 connections were reported or about 13 per organization. So the, the density of the network, which is the percentage of all possible connections had increased to 42%. That's 42% up from 27% in just 18 months. And not just were they talking to each other more often, but the University of Minnesota also found that the quality of the connections had increased as there were fewer relationships based on information sharing and more relationships based on coordination and collaboration. So we've really been able to see the Launch Minnesota Network make a change for regions all over Minnesota. And we're very happy to uh, be part of that. And we're excited to be distributing more funds through the education grants and continuing those efforts. All right. Um, going to switch gears a little bit and talk through the specifics for the RFP today. Oh, I should introduce myself. I am <laughs> I'm Paul Daniels. I'm a grant specialist that works in the Office of Community Partnerships here at Deed, um, and I'll be the, the grant specialist working on the Launch Minnesota um, RFP. Um, so uh, we've got the timeline here of the RFP. It was obviously released um, July 17th last week. And July 25th, today is our information session. Um, we have a deadline for questions uh, that will be August 25th. And the reason there's a deadline for that is because we need to be able to post answers for everyone. Um, the proposals will be due a few weeks later, September 14th. Uh, we're hoping to issue award notifications in October and have contracts fully executed by the end of October. Some of the key objectives um, we're hoping to accomplish with this grant are to increase new business formation in the state, um, build on the strength of others in the region through partnerships and collaboration, um, to create an easier navigation for entrepreneurs to make that pipeline easier to get into, and to support the full life cycle of startups. And some deliverables that we'll expect from each of our grantees um, is to uh, track a record of success throughout the, the period of um, their grant, to deliver education and resources to entrepreneurs and startups throughout the state, to uh, serve as a connector and a convener for entrepreneurs and startups, um, to uh, uh, host uh, events and competitions and help connect entrepreneurs to those, um, to collect data and share that data with us and to meet regularly. All right, so now some specifics from the RFP that was posted um, that we want to talk about. Um, the objectives in the RFP are to establish a network of designated Launch Minnesota regional partners that will work with Launch Minnesota staff at DEED to deliver education and counseling to high technology startups. Um, to provide outreach on startup investment opportunities and to provide networking opportunities for entrepreneurs, investors, and other stakeholders in support of the full life cycle of innovative technology startups. Uh, funding for this program is $1 million, which uh, we received from the legislature. This is for um, two years. The grant period will be uh, for the full two years, so your contract will be for that full time period. 
Um, I will note the way we are receiving the money from the legislature. You can only include up to half of it in your first year and then the other half in the following year. Um, so just be warned, you can't front load the grant when you're putting together a budget. We only receive half the money in the first year and, and the other half in the second year. Uh, awards will range from $50,000 to $150,000. That uh, lower end of the range is new. In the past, we haven't included a lower end, but we want to provide um, a little more clarity for potential applicants around what you might expect to receive in terms of funding. Um, and we are predicting that the average award will be around $125,000 over two years. Uh, we're estimating there will be about eight applicants that are ultimately awarded. And uh, it's of note that there's a one to one matching, a cash matching requirement with this grant. Um, so that will need to be one to one with whatever you request. Eligibility for this grant. Um, all organizations are eligible, including higher education institutions, but you must have experience and success in providing educational program to entrepreneurs and providing outreach to and collaboration with um, a number of different organizations that are vital to the ecosystem um, here in Minnesota. Uh, and priority is going to be given to proposals that seek to serve um, sort of these targeted groups of business owners, entrepreneurs that are women, veterans, minority um, group members or businesses and entrepreneurs with disabilities or for working with businesses located in greater Minnesota. Um, here's a list of some of the eligible uses that uh, we're expecting grantees to deliver on um, through services, um, including uh, commercialization, um, uh, access to risk, risk capital, um, working on statewide collaboration throughout the uh, Launch Minnesota ecosystem, and also um, through networking uh, as part of this grant. Um, As for the service area, you should expect um, organizations are seeking to be uh, regional partners and you're encouraged to define a service area that matches up with the deed business development regions. Um, we have an example coming up and it's also included in the RFP, um, but our hope is that you will um, identify a service area that matches one of those areas. Um, it's the intent that we'll have at least one in each of these regions um, to serve as the um, sort of hub of the hub and spoke model um, as as our regional partner in that area. Uh, and here is that map um, showing the business development regions throughout the state. There's six of them uh, broken down by counties. Um, so you can sort of pick out where you would be located and, and hopefully see um, a region that you can serve. On to allowable expenses for this grant. They're, they're really broken down into direct costs and indirect costs, um, expenses that are directly related to delivering on your grant objectives. Uh, can include personnel, fringe benefits, travel, if it's in-state, equipment, supplies, contractual, and subgrants out to partners. Um, these are kind of the typical line items that we see for grants, and they are uh, they apply only for direct services uh, directly meeting your grant objectives. Um, now, the opposite of that is the indirect costs that come with putting on a grant like this. Uh, these are administrative costs and uh, according to deed policy must be limited to 10% or less. Um, these kind of are the kind of things that uh, you have to do to keep your organization running and keep the lights on while you're um, fulfilling your objectives uh, in the grant. So we allow up to 10% and you'll include that in your budget. Uh, when you're applying. Uh, we also have a list of some of the ineligible expenses um, that we can't reimburse on either the, the admin or the uh, direct um, cost side of things. Uh, and those are listed out here. The one that I kind of highlighted before is we can't pay for any out of state travel. Minnesota is considered the travel home for these grants. And um, even if it is a directly related activity out, out of state, we can't uh, reimburse that. 
Um, next, let's talk about collaboration and matching. That's a very important part of this grant. Um, programmatic partnerships and collaborations between organizations are um, not only eligible, but encouraged. We love to see a, a robust list of partners with um, your grant proposal, um, but each proposal must identify a lead fiscal agent or a lead applicant on it, and that entity is responsible for administering the funds, um, entering a contract with deed, um, and fulfilling all objectives outlined in your grant. Um, of course, partners will be listed and discussed in your application, but we need one lead applicant to be identified. Um, you must abide by the non-collusion rules, and we'll ask that you sign an affidavit of uh, non-collusion. That essentially means you're not sharing specifics of your application with other um, partners or organizations that might be submitting for uh, this application as well. Um, the budget uh, you submit should identify sources of any matching funds, both in kind and cash, although we have a one to one cash requirement. We also um, would love to see in kind matching if any of that is is part of your proposal um, and, and make sure to identify where those are coming from and whether or not they are committed or non committed at the point of applying. Um, and proposals must also identify any dollar amount and percentage of state money that is involved in the project it does not count towards your match, but we still like to know what other state funds are involved uh, in any proposal. Um, this is the uh, our form number two. It's our partnership matrix. We're asking every applicant to submit this. Um, it is how we know who your partners are and what they're doing, how they're involved in the uh, actual meeting of grant objectives. Um, so it, this is just the sample one. It lists obviously a number of different types of organizations and additional ones that got cut off here. Um, you are not required to have a partner with each of these different types of organizations. However, high scoring proposals will have partners in each of these different areas. Um, for example, higher education, um, a partner with uh, an SBDC office, um, and there's a, a list of others that um, are suggested organizations to partner with throughout your ecosystem. Uh, and then, as you can see, just additional details about what admin and program activities they'll be involved in um, and if they're contributing any money or receiving any money through the grant. Here's a couple key definitions we wanted to pull out. There's a um, longer list in the RFP, just so everyone can be on the same page by what we mean when we're talking about some of these. Um, but we wanted to include these three. Here's a list of uh, high technology businesses and what that uh, would include, um, as well as how the state defines an entrepreneur. That's a Minnesota resident who is involved in establishing a business entity and secures resources directed to its growth while bearing the risk of loss. Um, and finally, how the state defines a uh, startup. All right, now to get into uh, the details of what we're expecting you to submit, the actual proposals we're hoping to receive. Um, there's a couple different parts to it. Um, first, there's a cover page, which is a form that we have provided you and we're just asking you to fill out. It's basic details about your organization, what you're proposing, um, some sort of key numbers that we want to be able to pull out easily. Then we ask for an executive summary. About one page is our expectation. This should um, be a pretty typical executive summary and hit the, the major points of your proposal um, so that uh, without having to go through the full proposal, we can uh, be able to share this and, and get the gist of um, what is being uh, proposed. Uh, the real big sections that we'll expect to see are in the narrative area. Um, there's a couple different pieces here, and we'll get into the scoring of each a bit later, but we're looking for you uh, to discuss your organizational capacity and relevant experience. This area would talk about um, some of your staff members, some of your uh, experience in working in this area, how your organization is best equipped to meet the objectives of this grant and to carry out this work. Um, then we'll look at the project design and work plan. This is the highest um, scored area in the proposal, and it really is the work that you're going to be do uh, be doing as part of the grant. Uh, this should include timelines. It should 
include clear objectives that you're going to meet, how you're going to meet those goals, um, and how this fits into the broader scheme of Launch Minnesota and the RFP that we're putting forward. Uh, next is the partnerships and collaboration section. This is where you'll talk in a narrative format about the different partnerships uh, that you listed in that form number two, and will be your opportunity to talk about uh, all the collaborations you have planned, how you're going to work together, um, to talk a little bit about the organiz organizational capacity of those partners as well, um, and really flesh out uh, how you're going to build an ecosystem of partners. The next section is performance and evaluation. Um, this is an important piece of each grant. We're looking for you to be able to report on the work that you've done and to set um, realistic uh, yet ambitious goals for the grant objectives and, and how you'll be going about measuring those. Um, if you're using a CRM or some other method for collecting that data, we want to know about it uh, in this area. And then finally, the budget narrative and budget template. This is another um, template that we will provide for you to fill in, but uh, we're expecting a little narrative around that as well. Um, talk to us about how you're going to spend the money, what are you going to spend it on, um, and then actually laying out those numbers for us in the budget template, as well as the matching piece, uh, talking about the sources of those funds, um, if, whether they're uh, fully committed or not, um, and, and giving us a clear picture on how you're going to spend the money. And then there's a few additional required attachments in the RFP as well. Talk about in a bit. On the next slide, actually. Um, so these are the other required documents that we're um, asking to be submitted with your narrative sections of proposal. Uh, obviously, the partnership matrix, which we've gone through. There's a conflict of interest disclosure form that needs to be signed and submitted. Um, that affidavit of non-collusion, as we talked about before. Um, the unemployment insurance account consent form is one that I don't think we've included in the past, but we need this in case we need to look into um, unemployment insurance contributions here at DEED. And then finally, for any NGOs applying, we must do a financial review as part of it. Um, depending on your revenue level, we will require a different document from you, um, if it's under 50,000, it could be, and you haven't been in existence long enough to have completed uh, Form 990, then we would need your most recent board reviewed financial statement. If you're between um, 50,000 and 750,000 in revenue, we would request your most recent Form 990. And if you're above um, 750,000, we would ask that you submit your most recent certified financial audit. For proposal submission, um, we have a, an email set up, launchminnesota at state.mn.us. This is where we're expecting proposals to be emailed into. Um, please submit it in a single PDF document. You can attach all of the forms, all the narrative sections, all in one document. Um, that really helps us out. The deadline is September 14th at 4 p.m. That is a very firm deadline and any proposals not received by 4 p.m. will not be reviewed by the committee. Um, I would encourage you to submit it earlier than that. Uh, days or weeks in advance if you're able to, that is a very firm deadline. Um, and if you run into any troubles with um, submitting that to us, please let us know as soon as you can. You should receive a confirmation email uh, from us once a proposal has been received. Uh, if you need any help when you're filling out uh, the proposal, you can also reach out to the same email, launchminnesota at state.mn.us. Um, please reach out with any questions prior to August 25th, so we have an opportunity to answer those questions and get them posted. We want to make sure everyone has the same access to information in relation to this grant, so we post a frequently asked, to, asked questions page in the same location that the RFP is posted. Uh, and that will get updated regularly with questions we receive um, so that everyone has access to the same information. The final one will be posted sometime after August 25th once we're able to compile answers to all the questions we've received. For evaluating the proposals, uh, they will all be reviewed, scored, and ranked by a panel of subject matter experts and reviewers who then provide a recommendation to the commissioner. 
Um, so for as with every grant we do, we put together a um, review committee that will read and, and review all of them. Um, Launch Minnesota staff and the Launch Minnesota Advisory Board will not review or recommend any proposals as part of that. Um, this is a separate review committee put together to evaluate uh, these proposals specifically. Scoring is on a 100 point scale with uh, the points being available in the sections we talked about earlier. Here's just a breakdown of, of how that will be done. Um, you can see the largest point totals in the project design and work plan um, with smaller totals in the other sections. Awards are determined solely by the commissioner of deed. Uh, the review committee puts together a um, recommendation for him and, and uh, we'll present that to the commissioner, but all award decisions are made by the commissioner here at deed. Um, those decisions are final and we do not have any appeal process, uh, so they are not subject to appeal. Um, the commissioner reserves the right to change the amount of any award for projects that are selected. Um, this is where partial awards come in. You may submit at $1 amount, um, but it's at the sole discretion of the commissioner how much you are actually awarded as part of that. Um, as I mentioned, new this year, we're, we're setting sort of a minimum of 50,000 up to 150,000. So you can know it will be somewhere in there, but partial awards are possible um, depending on, on what the commissioner uh, decides to do. Um, those determinations will be made in October. And um, this is a very important point. You cannot start on your project until you have an executed contract in hand. Um, that means it's received all the signatures it needs to um, and our staff tell you that it is fully executed. At that point, you can start incurring costs. Any costs incurred prior to that point are not reimbursable by deed. Receiving an award, if you do get awarded, you'll receive an official award letter from us, um, including your final award amount and steps for moving forward. Uh, if you do receive a partial award or are not fully funded from your request, we will ask that you submit an updated work plan and budget to us um, just to match the amount that you're actually receiving. Uh, after that, we'll work through the contracting process of having you um, review and sign a contract from Deed. With your fully executed contract, you'll also receive a reimbursement payment request form. Um, this is a, a standard form we use here at Deed for getting reimbursements on our grants, and I'm, I'm happy to work with any awardees on, on what goes into that form and how you can uh, receive reimbursement. And then uh, from then on out, there will be periodic uh, monitoring. We have uh, reporting expectations with these grants uh, that will be quarterly, and, um, and you will need to participate in at least one monitoring visit during the course of your grant. Um, and all grant funds are dispersed on a reimbursement basis. We are not doing any um, advance payments as part of this. Um, so a deed staff member will be assigned to your project. It will be me um, and I'll be here to offer ongoing technical assistance um, throughout the course of um, either applying or after uh, you've been awarded. Um, I'm here to help with payment requests, progress reports, uh, as well as I mentioned the ongoing monitoring of your grants. Uh, that is in addition, of course, to Maddie and Neela um, working on the Launch Minnesota team. They are there to answer all questions about uh, Launch Minnesota and help you with activities related to that. Uh, my role is to help with uh, the grant management um, of this program. All right, and then we are to the, the questions portion of the webinar. Um, all of the questions that we receive via email will be posted at the same place as the RFP. Um, please get those into us by our August 25th so we have a chance to update it. Um, I think it probably works best to post questions in the chat and then we can just walk through them, um, but also I guess raise your hand if you have a question. I'll start with the, the chat, I think. Thank you, Paul. You you covered yeah. a lot of details. Um, 
So yeah, please share your questions yeah. in the chat or raise your hand. Looks like we got a question on the match. It says previous years there was an in-kind match. Are you looking for both cash and in-kind? Um, the requirement is one-to-one -one cash match, but we are also looking for in-kind. If if you can offer that, it certainly um, is something the review, review committee takes into account when they're looking at that um, is both cash or in-kind, but the requirement is one-to-one -one cash. Give everyone an opportunity to type out a question if you are. Ben. Go ahead, Ben. Thank you. I was trying to type this out and it didn't <laughs> work very well. Um, Neela mentioned at the start of the call that this year or that the Launch Minnesota grant is focusing on referrals for founders to the entrepreneur support organizations and other entities in a region that provide support for founders. Uh, but as I'm looking at, for instance, the objectives section, the columns on the partnership matrix, the eligible uses in the grant, um, the uh, how to structure that like argument that we're providing these referrals and that the way we're doing that is under those eligible uses is not clear to me. A lot of the language is similar to last time, which had a more, more of a focus on technical assistance as an outcome of the grant. Um, is that, uh, is the consistency of those sections intentional? Is maybe one leading question. Those, those areas are what's written in legislation. Um, and so what will happen this year is it's more on the one to many when you think about some of those efforts, maybe it's uh, the preparation for some of the pitch events, maybe it's some education on um, um, linking to some like uh, the federal programming with MNSBIR, STTR, um, and uh, you know, the whole host of, of other um, topic areas that it's it's covered there and in the RFP it breaks down to what each area wants to focus on and how and with who. Um, but that it is we are leaning more this year on that navigation piece, a place where entrepreneurs and startups can go to figure out where what stage they're in and who at that stage can best help them. Um, and it's really referring to other partners, whether that be our small business uh, um, assistance partnership grantees when they are announced. So they can go there for that technical assistance, that one-on-one -on -one consulting. Um, is it and also referring to our SBDC offices and, and vice versa, right? So the SBDC offices would be able to provide that consulting and one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, but then they can loop back with our launch network to be part of that rich ecosystem and that network uh, for the trainings and networking events, pitch competitions, education and connecting to investor communities and other, other types of things that might not happen uh, with our other partners and stakeholders. Does that help, Ben? I think so. I might circle back in a moment once I find the right okay. spot in the RFP. Jeff has a question in chat. Yeah, there's a question here, Neela, mm -hmm. about um, different regions. Yeah, um, of course, other regions can collaborate. That's the the whole benefit of the the launch network. It um, we're seeing the 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 effects and the impact work. Uh, you now know people outside of not only your city but in other regions and. If that work needs to be leveraged to provide better service for your businesses in your area, that that's acceptable. Yeah. Jeff, did that answer it? Maybe if I could follow up, uh, Neela. Um, if let's say two or well, you you know, of course, we had a, an investor event that we collaborated across the three northernmost regions uh, last time around, and we're we've discussed doing more of that in the mm -hmm. next round. Should we all get an award, of course? Um, 
we may all put a piece of that in our in our individual grant proposal submissions uh, that it all kind of is potentially somewhat dependent upon all of us getting if you know it works well if all three of us get that funding let's say for instance um, I just wanted to make sure you know in in the previous um, in the previous uh, webinar there was discussion of you know collusion and sharing details things like that with each other I want to make sure we don't run afoul of that because to build that collaboration in the grant proposal you pretty much have to share some details with each other so I'm just kind of curious how that how that works right I, I mean obviously it's a competitive grant process so we you know just because the three regions might want to work together doesn't mean that necessarily they're all three be funded at the level that they want or 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 receive the funding um, on the collusion piece, Paul is really our expert on that, but we understand, um, you know, at the, at the high level that, that the grant is asking to help enrich your investor community and um, that innovative ecosystem, which includes making connections and growing relationships with potential investors. So that, that seems to me to align uh, well with the mission of this RFP. Paul, would you mm -hmm. add any other insight on that? Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one with this grant yeah. because it's such a big uh, important piece is, is those partnerships. Um, but uh, the definition of, of collusion as um, you would have to sign off on the form is that you haven't shared specifics about what you're putting in your application with another organization that is also um, going to be submitting an application. So in that regard, it's it would be tough to say plan a specific event with another applicant prior to submitting your application, um, but broad strokes and um, your familiarity with what other groups are doing, conversations in general about collaborating are welcomed and, and frankly a big part of this grant. Okay, okay, thank you. Another question here, how does the 500k per year of funding compare with prior launch Minnesota RFPs and did the eligible recipients expand from the RFP versus what um, I showed in the slides to the first question Neela I don't remember what yeah, the amount the, of funding the, was last the, year. the amount is the same John um, we always had that the half a million per fiscal year um, now, though, this round we are doing it for the full 24 months because we've re we've listened to all of you and that gap in funding is challenging. So we're going from an October to October calendar. Um, but as Paul said, that half million the you know, it can't be upload, you know, up, uh, it needs to be spread out throughout those two consecutive years and not front loaded. Um, mm -hmm. But the, it is the same uh, recipients that are eligible for this grant. I would just say that um, if you are providing direct technical assistance and education, um, that the Small Business Partnership Grant is a, a good fit for you, though the Small Business Partnership grantees will be an active member of the launch network. We're all now under the Office of Small Business Development, and we're leaning on all of the various funding sources and um, programmatic work. So that's what I would say is that in the beginning of the webinar, when I discussed the small business assistance program and that fit, which is almost $12 million compared to the launch Minnesota grant, which is 1 million for the biennium. If you're, you know, as, as the university providing the, those classrooms, if you're a nonprofit doing an accelerator program, those direct one-to-one um, -one, uh, services, the Small Business Assistance Partnership Grant, that's a mouthful, uh, is, a, is a good fit, a, a good alignment to the, that work. Does that help, John? Oh, you're muted. So with the the last and the last round was a year and a half, right? So was that just seven hundred fifty thousand in terms of the total, or is it the same amount just spread over a longer time? It's the same amount then amortized over more okay. months, but that's what we were asked by our communities to do. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's fine. 
And I think Jeff had some, there was some mention on your slide earlier about some investor or something, which was different than the cover page of the RFP. I don't know if that was a change and I didn't really understand the, the bullet point. Hmm. But where is that, John? Could you? We talked about you eligible know? recipients at the beginning. Okay. Um, we want to correct anything that's wrong. It has to be a dangle. There, there was one that talked about. It was those two sub bullets there, but it talked about some type of uh, investor outreach or some clear. Hmm. Sorry, I can. There, the, what the provide outreach on startup investment opportunities is that. Can you help? Help? Um, what does that mean? I mean, I think that's like your the, um, the some of the pitch events, right? It's gathering our in investor community, fostering that investor community. We've seen a lot of growth with some investment funds. Um, so it, it's anything on the on those pieces. Okay. So getting the startups more prepared to talk to investors. Okay, so it could be with startups or with investors. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Yeah, we, we could try to clarify that bullet, John. Thanks for pointing that out. Russ? Yeah, hey, Neela. Uh, good hey. afternoon. Um, so I just want to, you said something that um, I just want to clarify. So um, based upon your view and the support we've provided with the Discovery Launchpad, what I got out of that was that you're suggesting we might want to look at the small business partnership grant instead of the launch Minnesota grant as a vehicle to continue that initiative. Did I did I understand that correctly? I'm um, j just saying in general what the two different grants, the two different RFPs are focused on, right? Based on um, the the funding that we have available, how we can best serve um our businesses when we're focusing on equity vibrancy and innovation um that our small business partnership grants for 12 almost 12 million over the biennium is focused on that one-to-one -one consulting and direct service mm -hmm. so it's it aligns well with uh, classroom settings cohorts one-to-one -one counseling consulting right mm -hmm. um the small the launch minnesota network in legislation really also talks more about the navigation and and building the connections in the regions and the state and really building out that innovation ecosystem, um, help, helping out that entrepreneurial journey from start to scale. Obviously, our recipients of the Small Business Assistance Partnership Grant would work closely with the hub and spoke model and the partners in the launch network. They would be part of a uh, the referral system back and forth, right? Okay. So, hi there. Good afternoon. I placed a, oh, um, a catering oh, one, order last one week, second. and I just wanted you're to call out, and pay in full today. You, you're not muted. We can hear you. Um, so, um, everyone will work together, right? We have this common goal of, of you know, growing our our state's economy and each all of the RFPs and the funding that we have available does that goal and that mission. Um, it's just a matter for your organization, what best fits your, what you're working on and what you want to do. Well, I mean, I want to go back to, I, I guess what I'd like to see maybe is a little guidance from you, Neil, on what you think we should do. Uh, it, it, because, I mean, you know, we've, We've really tried to work together with you to figure out what's the best fit and how we can help. And yeah. and I want to continue to do that. But if 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 putting in a proposal here isn't the right fit, then are and we in in what would be better proposed is to put a proposal in in a different area. I right. guess I'd like your guidance versus yeah. just and say, we, tell me. 
Yeah. And so I guess, um, so you, in the past, I don't know what you're thinking about in the future, right. but from your past per, past work, um, you've provided consulting, direct one-on-one -on -one support services to businesses right. in an accelerator type manner format. Mm -hmm. So that would fit best under the small business assistant partnership grant because um, of the work that you're going to be doing to support direct businesses, direct the work directly to businesses. Um, though, once again, you would be part of this greater ecosystem and the Launch Minnesota Network would still be able to refer um, clients to our our business partnership grantees okay. uh, for that. Is, is there a similar session like this for that particular? That event? happened last Thursday, but it was recorded. Oh. And Paul, was that added to the website? Yep, it was posted. And okay. in the informational mm -hmm. web uh, email on this, um, there was also information on that um, partnership grant. And so we, I can send that. We can put that in the FAQ and make sure everyone's aware of it. And I can actually put it, the announcement right here in the in the chat, so everyone has that right now. Okay. This is good. a this is a benefit I see with the the uh, new Office of Small Business Development. So we can leverage the funding that we have available, Russ, to better uh, meet the needs of more businesses. Yep, no, it makes sense. I just wanted to make sure I'm seeing this properly. So thanks for mm -hmm. providing the feedback. And, and I just provided the news release of both the RFPs. Got it. Thank it, you. It looks like Ben was quick too and put a link in there. So thank you, Ben. Any other questions? Uh, looks like Ben had one in the chat here about uh, reporting and the, the specific categories we had listed in the RFP, new year, new unique client hours, capital equity raised and business starts, um, and wondering if additional um, metrics can be considered and how yes. those were decided on. Um, and yes, definitely you can include other metrics in addition to that. Those three are kind of areas that we're trying to be a little more uniform with across our different programs. and and the work that we're doing in small business development. Um, so that's how those three were decided upon, but definitely there will be more specific metrics to include in this kind of proposal. Ben, do you have another question? I do, uh, different topic. Um, the on page 15 of the RFP, you talk about the different uh, pre-filled categories in the partnership matrix document, uh, higher mm -hmm. ed, SBDC, local government, et cetera. Um, if the anticipation is that about $125,000 will be available for two years for each region, and there are eight of these categories, um, just Am I right to assume that like I'm thinking entrepreneur support organizations or co-working spaces might be more likely to receive funding from Launch Minnesota? Um, and like as we're reaching out to investors or corporate partners, they might be more intended as match sources. Right. And this partnership matrix not isn't necessarily focused on the funding aspect of it, but uh, to to start bringing uh, and enhancing uh, the individuals in your region or in your your area that are working towards this goal of bolstering our innovation ecosystem, right? So if we take Forge North as an example uh, and the work that you do, you convene investors, you work with corporate innovators, you work with ESOs, uh, you work with successful founders, right? You are building um, and strengthening those bonds that increase thus the ecosystem and increases the the rate and success of our startup community. So that is um, um, some of the things that we'd like to see across the state so we can sit, continue to grow um, and remain competitive across the nation and the globe to be, um, you know, um, as an ultimate goal, right? So um, just mm -hmm. trying to better connect um, the resources that we have, and then also 
um, work on building that that connectivity that's needed to see success. Okay, so there might be like some minimum threshold of participation, contribution from people who bring in a or advisors, of support, right? Or you talk to the successful founders, what they mm -hmm. find beneficial. You ask investors what they're seeing. You invite them to some of the pitch events where you have some of the successful founders help mentor some of the more emerging entrepreneurs. You uh, talk with some of the higher ed institutions to leverage their knowledge of their faculty or students to help some of the startups, you know, just some mm -hmm. some general ideas, some okay. of that cl cross collaboration. Yeah. Um, working with John and the rest of the folks at the U of M is always fun, um, as are other institutions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Right. Any last questions? We're just approaching time here. All right. Well, seeing none, uh, the session is being recorded and will be posted um, as soon as we can get it up on the site for anyone that wasn't able to attend or, or uh, didn't find their way to the this meeting. 